Peace. What's good? How y'all doing? This is Zaza Ali, and welcome to another edition of 60 Days of History with Zaza Ali. Today is day six, and we will be focusing on the Yihitwan and well, it's the Yihitwan movement and Boxer's Rebellion, but I left movement out of the subject because you know it has a little bit more pizzazz. So, but it's the Yihitwan movement, also known as the Boxer's Rebe Rebellion of China which happened in the early 1900s. And this is this section is found in the chapter four of the book, African Presence in Asia. And this is one of the larger chapters in the book, African Presence in Asia and the Moors in Spain are, are both the two sort of physically largest um, chapters in the book. And I love to African presence in Asia because it, because it is very strong on the warrior energy. And so is the Moors in Spain. Um, but that's one of the things that I really appreciate about this chapter. So we're going to get into other uh, uh, great heroes that are found within this chapter as we get into the six day, 60 days of history. Today is day six. I'm pretty proud that we're on day six myself. I must say that. Um, and with that being said, um, China's, Boxer China's Boxer Rebellion of 1900, <clears throat> excuse me. The Boxer Rebellion, a bloody resistance in Chicago, in China. I was about to say Chicago. In China at the turn of the 20th century against foreigners is a relatively obscure historical event with far reaching consequences that is often only remembered because of its unusual name. These warriors were members of a secret society made up of mostly so called peasants. And I say, I, I intentionally said so called because. I don't like the way that that word gets used so much um, in history by modern historians, even uh, Japanese and Chinese culture in particular. I noticed that when we start getting into the ancient Chinese and Japanese people who are very dark skinned, were and are very dark skinned people, as you can see on these images on your screen, the word peasant gets used a lot. And so reading in between the lines, and doing a lot of the research for this book, I realized that a lot of these people were just farmers. <laughs> and so they use the word peasant to sort of, you know, demean or demoralize them. So I use the term so-called or I'll put the word in quotation mark if I'm quoting something to, you know, stay true to what the original quote was. But um, it is something that I notice, and it is something that we need to sort of correct in the way we address. We look at these historical figures. Um, these warriors were members of a secret society made up of mostly so-called peasants in Northern China, known as Yi Ho Chuan, which means righteous and harmonious fists, and were called the boxers by the Western press. Most of the secret society practiced boxing and calisthenic rituals that they thought would make them unaffected by bullets and attacks, and this led to their unusual but memorable name. At the end of the 19th century, Western countries and Japan had major control over economic policies in China and had significant territorial and commercial control in northern China. The poor people in this area were suffering economically, and they blamed this on the foreigners who were present in their country. It was this anger that gave rise to the violence that will go down in history as the Boxer Rebellion. And just again, to emphasize the image that you see here in front of me, it's not AI. These are not fabricated, you know, nobody tampered with the, the imagery. There are plenty of um, in the color tone. There's plenty of these images all over the Internet of the dark skin, original Chinese people, and the original uh, uh, who were the Jia and the Shang, and then the original Japanese people who were the Jamin and the Ainu, also known as the uh, Irishi. So there's plenty of images to prove this, but I'm just saying, where there is land, everywhere you go, there are black people, dark skin, dark skin people, dark brown, brown skin people, melanated people, indigenous people, native people, whichever of those terminologies you like best, they're all welcome here. But everywhere in the world you go, the original people are look like these brothers and this sister on this screen right here. And they are these are some of the captured uh, prisoners who were part of the Yihituan movement or the Boxer Rebellion. <clears throat> At the end of the 19th century, 
Western countries and Japan had major control over economic policies in China and had significant territorial and commercial control in Northern China. The poor people in this area were suffering, I read this already, huh? economically, and they blamed this on the foreigners who were present in their country. It was this anger that gave rise to the violence that would go down in history as the Boxer Rebellion. Beginning in the late 1890s, the Boxers began attacking Christian missionaries, Chinese Christians, and foreigners in Northern China. These attacks eventually spread to the capital, Beijing, in June of 1900, when the Boxers destroyed railroad stations and churches and laid siege to the area where foreign diplomats lived. It is estimated that the death toll included several hundred foreigners and several thousand Chinese Christians. The Jing Dynasty's Empress, uh, Dowager Tizu, Tizu Shai, <laughs> I, I listened to the pronunciation of this word, okay. It's, it's Tuzi, it's Tuzi, Tuzi, I think, back the boxers. I swear I just pronounced this and practiced it multiple times. I'm gonna get it right. Back the boxers and the day after the boxers began the siege on foreign diplomats, she declared war on all foreign countries that had diplomatic ties with China. Generally speaking, Christianity was a threat to traditional Buddhist or Confucianist beliefs and attitudes within Chinese society. However, why is my, did my video stop playing? That's supposed to run the whole time I read this, but okay. Um, generally speaking, Christianity was a threat to traditional Buddhist and Confucius beliefs and attitudes within Chinese society. However, the Shangdang, the Shangdang drought provided the specific catalyst that set off the anti-Christian boxer, boxer movement. Traditionally, entire communities would come together during times of drought and pray to the gods and ancestors for rain. However, these villagers who had converted to Christianity refused to participate in these rituals. Their neighbors suspected that this was the reason that the gods did not respond to their prayers for rain. And let me switch up my screen here real quick because the video in the back is supposed to be part of the vibe. So you see I'm representing the cherry blossoms heavy here. But before I, I switch my um, page, you see this image here on this spreadsheet, I mean on this slide spreadsheet, which is page... 283 within the book. Um, you can't really, you can, you know, I don't know how you guys can see it on your phones or on your computers, but this is an image of a lot of, uh, it says Chinese Christian refugees gathered by Father Kiloks into the apostolic mission during the bombardment of Tianjin, China. The Battle of Tianjin occurred on July 13th through 14th, 1900. So you can see a lot of these babies that are in the front um, are darker skinned Chinese refugees, quote unquote refugees, but you can't really see it in the image because, you know, it's obviously, it has depth that goes very far back, but most of the images all the way in the back are very, very dark skinned men and women. And when you can scroll in and see the image clearer, you can definitely see that. So just to give a little bit more context to the beauty and the variety of the ancient original indigenous Chinese people. Okay. As desperation and mistrust grew, rumors spread that the Chinese Christians were killing people for their organs to use as ingredients in magical medicines or putting poisons in the well, in the wells. Farmers genuinely believed that the Christians had so angered the gods that all of the regions were being punished with drought. Young men idled by the lack of crops to look after began to practice martial arts and eye their Christian neighbors. Meanwhile, a multinational foreign force was gearing up in Northern China. In August of 1900, after nearly two months of a siege, thousands of allied American, British, Russian, Japanese, Italian, German, French, and Austro-Hungarian troops moved out of Northern China to take Beijing and put down the rebellion, which they accomplished. <clears throat> you see my, my video stopped. That means I, 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 there was an extra setting that I forgot to do. Um, the Boxer Rebellion officially ended in September of 1901 with the signing of the Boxer Protocol, which enforced the punishment of those involved in the rebellion and required China to pay reparations of $330 million to the country, to the countries affected. Imagine that. The, and this wasn't that long ago. 
The Boxer Rebellion weakened the Qing Dynasty, which was the last imperial dynasty of China and had ruled the country from 1644 to 1912. It was this dynasty that established the modern territory of China. The weakened state of the Qing Dynasty after the Boxer Rebellion opened the door to the Republican Re Revolution of 1911 that overthrew the emperor and made China a republic. The, public, the Republic of China, including mainland China and Taiwan, Taiwan, Taiwan I didn't mean to say it like that. <laughs> the Republic of China, including mainland China and Taiwan, existed from 1912 to 1949. It fell to the Chinese communists in 1949, with mainland China officially becoming the Republic the People's Republic of China, and Taiwan, the headquarters of the Republic of China. No peace treaty has ever been signed and significant tensions remain. Now, before I go to my next slide, I just wanna take a moment to recognize the beauty of this image on the screen. Um, strong warrior energy, obviously. This is not an AI image. Again, there's no fabrication to this. This is in the early 1900s. These uh, warriors, and these, um, there's a word that's escaping my mind. These, uh, uh, they called themselves the righteous and harmonious fists, right? And you can see the brothers in the middle right here. Let me just bring my, you can see the brothers in the middle right here at the table with the book holding, holding the book there, right? You see little man got his mug on heavy. He looks like he's, you know, his energy, his aura, uh, is giving me, he's one of the, you know, maybe master teachers, maybe main Sufis, maybe, you know, grandmasters, etc. And then him as well. Both of these two brothers right here, and then they're both the only ones seated. So I would imagine that that means something. But I just want to take a moment just to look at the beautiful, melanated, black, chocolate reflections of ancient China. And this is heavy warrior energy right here, because these people were fighting to maintain their culture and to maintain their customs. The Yi Tuan or boxers arose out of a Chinese secret society that was in itself an offshoot, <clears throat> excuse me, let me make sure I'm on the right page here. Yes, I am. The Yi Tuan or boxers arose out of a Chinese secret society that was itself an offshoot of the eight tri trigram society. This society's name translated to the righteous and harmonious fists and they engaged in martial arts training with the belief that it would make them invulnerable. The name boxers was given to the group by English speaking missionaries who used the only similar equivalent word they had for martial artists. And you will recognize as you make your way through this book and even as we have go on with the you know 60 days of history here, that there is a continuity of this same sort of story happening in all over the world where you know, people who were living their natural customs, their organic lifestyles, the way that they were taught by their ancestors, all of a sudden were invaded by outside forces that forced Christianity on them, that forced them to take on their custom and their ways. And so there were plenty of revolutionary warrior spirited men and women around the world who stood up against this. And this is one of those stories. And I'm so grateful that I put several of these stories in terms of the rebellious aspect um, from the 18th dynasty, 17th and 18th dynasty, where Kemet was fighting against um, the Hyksos uh, um, uh, in the, the warrior kings of um, ancient Hawaii, the ancient Polynesian warrior kings, the Moorish Spain, and you know the the Moors who went up into Europe and, and conquered these areas and not only conquered them, but they were welcomed with open arms. The people were treated with kindness and with respect and with dignity. So I'm very happy to be, you know, and I have that, that warrior spirit myself. So I've always loved martial arts. I've always been fascinated by aspects of the culture. And so it was only right <laughs> for me to include these beautiful legendary um, warriors who are not really getting the type of uh, of you know display and 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 celebration 
in in the broader coach. Uh, that's what we're here for. Ancient People is a social studies and history textbook. It is a full color, 349 page historical expose focused on ancient civilizations around the world. Available in paperback and hardcover, this book places emphasis on vocabulary, spelling, critical thinking, and more. There are more than 450 pages in photos, excuse me, included in the book as well. Our chapters include Hawaii's last monarchy, the Moors of Spain, the Kandakis of Ethiopia and Kush, the African presence in Asia, and Pharaoh Hubshetsit and the 18th dynasty. I will put the information in the description to get your copy. And my website is zazali.com. Peace and love.